evening. What's going on there, folks? It is Earthmaster here on this beautiful, absolutely beautiful Tuesday evening. August 24th, 2021 is the date here uh, with a time of 540 along the West Coast here in California, where the latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe is a 3.1 along the Aleutian Islands here in Alaska. Let's go ahead and talk about what's going on out in Hawaii. I'm sure quite a few you folks um, seen the updated advisory for the Hawaiian area. Kilauea Volcano uh, looks like they have upgraded the alert level. Uh, let's see here. Kilauea Volcano, this was uh, published August 24th from the USGS.gov website. This is an official website. Um, Kilauea Volcano is not erupting, but they did issue um, a watch alert level. Current volcano alert level to a watch. Prior volcano alert level was an advisory. Uh, as far as aviation code, it was a yellow for uh, uh, quite a bit of time there. Uh, it has been upgraded to an orange on the aviation color code. Okay, now there is a swarm of earthquakes that have taken place there south uh, south southeast of the caldera of Kilauea and uh, looks as though uh, this began on the evening of last night so yesterday evening uh, the swarm continued into the early mornings of today with a particularly strong sequence of earthquakes that occurred at about 1 30 a.m. The onset of the earthquake swarm was uh, uh, coincident with a change in the style of the ground deformation at tilt meters in the Kilauea summit region. Potentially, I, I wouldn't say potentially, but potentially indicating the shallow movement of magma beneath the south part of the Kilauea volcano, Caldera, right? Pretty crazy activity. We've been watching this for a little bit of time here. Let's go ahead and check out the latest information from the USGS when it comes to the earthquake activity on the Big Island. For that, we need to go down to the all magnitudes so we can see really what's going on around the Kilauea volcano. Now, now you can't tell me that there's something major brewing down here, no doubt. Definitely seen a lot of magma movement. This is what you look for around a volcano for magma movement. This is not fear mongering. This is not um, interference from a generator or nearby machinery this is definitely magma movement very shallow magma movement and I wouldn't doubt it we see an eruption soon at the Kilauea volcano of course uh, quite a few months ago there was a you know and and quite a bit of towards the end of last year a lot of movement a lot of filling of the lake here the Kilauea uh, area the, the crater area that had died down for quite a while, but man, it looks as though with all this sufficient movement around the earth and the plate tectonics taking place, a return of the magma intrusion into the Kilauea crater area with a potential for an eruption here very, very soon. Um, this is over the last 24 hours. You can see in the red circles, that is within the last hour. So quite a bit of movement. We're looking at 200 and 46 earthquakes within the last 24 hours. That's a significant amount of volcanic activity taking place here on the Big Island. So be on guard for potential um, heightened volcanic activity on the Big Island. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely pay close attention to uh, webcams and whatnot and the USGS uh, HVO volcanic site. Uh, definitely something brewing down there. Um, let's see what these guys have to say here. Uh, the USG uh, Geological Survey Hawaiian Volcano Observatory has detected an increase in earthquake activity beneath the south part of the Kilauea Summit Caldera within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. The activity began, okay. Um, the same tilt increase. Okay, what do we got about tilt increase? The swarm was accompanied by an increase in the style of ground deformation. That's magma moving underneath the ground. Heat r heat adjusting the surface levels, right? Indicating um, surface movement on the GPS data stations. Uh, by an increase in the style of ground deformation recorded on the Sand Hill tilt meter just to the west of the earthquake swarm location. The same tilt increase 
was also recorded by the tilt meter near this specific uh, specific <laughs> specific bluff and uh, the site of the old HVO building. Uh, I think we seen that last time we had an eruption there. I remember that. Uh, about 1.30 a.m. this morning, the swarm of earthquakes intensified in this region. This activity may indicate an intrusion. It's no may, that, that, that should be, it is, this activity is an indication of intrusion of magma occurring one to two kilometers beneath the South Cadera uh, of Kilauea. So uh, very, very interesting activity taking place here on the uh, Big Island today uh, over the last 24, no doubt, look at that. We've been watching that pretty closely. We, we've seen a swarm of activity, not like this though. Uh, but a little a few earthquakes relatively shallow right around the crater area but you know what this is what you need to pay attention to magma intrusion underneath the ground and that's definitely taking place there at the uh, volcano on the big island so we'll pay uh, very close attention to that uh, within the next few days along the uh, western part northwestern part of the pacific ring of fire we did see a little bit of movement um, off the coast of Russia along the Corel Trench. Also Japan seeing a little bit of movement as well just to the uh, south or actually west of Tokyo. 357 kilometers for that 4.2. Woo! Talk about some deep earthquake activity. Over the last, oh technically over the last oh couple days or so we've seen a heightened amount of movement along the plate tectonic areas and i'm talking about globally uh, not only the pacific plate but the south american plate over here along the uh, south atlantic ocean areas down here around the antarctic plate a lot of movement down here along the south sandwich island so no doubt we could see uh, some magma moving and uh, that, that's kind of what it looks like there in the, in the middle of the pacific ocean that means hawaii um, looking at the pacific northwest the Cascades, we were kind of monitoring that activity a little bit last night. That has died down a little bit, but we're still looking at some movement around the Mount Baker area, uh, southwest of the region, about 10 kilometers or so. Looks like the largest 1.2 striking the area of the Mount Baker area. But this is kind of, I, I, I don't, I can't really say this is asso associated with the Mount Baker area. I can't, I can't really say that because of the distance. So this is, uh, I believe this is a lone um, earthquake activity um, aside from the Mount Baker volcano. With respect to that, I should say, 10 kilometers, it's pretty, it's pretty good distance there. So, but we will monitor that activity up there, no doubt. Any activity uh, around a volcano is worth monitoring. Uh, Mount Rainier, uh, a little bit of microquake activity. Mount St. Helens as well, Pacific Northwest into Oregon, relatively quiet except for uh, well, people trying to explode stuff around the Oakland, Oregon area. And uh, Northern California looks like a little bit of movement uh, outside of Willows or along the Sacramento Valley once again. South of Hamilton City, 22 kilometers below the surface of the valley. That's really deep. But this is, again, at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. You got the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate that sits up here along its entirety of the northwest down extending into north, uh, northern California. It's being subducted underneath the North American plate, which is a huge plate, kind of gobbling it up, if you will, with help from the Pacific plate over here to the west. Uh, I'm sure it's getting hungry. And eventually, right, what happens when you eat a lot of good food? Well, sometimes you have to burp. I get it, you have to burp. It's, it's human nature, right? What happens when you burp along a plate, con uh, plate tectonic region? You get volcanic activity, so be very cautious, be very observant of what's going on in the Pacific Plate and also the uh, Pacific Northwest around the volcanoes. Yellowstone Super Volcano, we haven't seen a whole lot of movement, but there is some microquake earthquake activity taking place in that region. Here is the uh, latest overview of the Yellowstone area. I see some movement, uh, picked up the six pointer around the Russia area. Uh, I don't see any specific swarming activity around the Yellowstone area at all, uh, none whatsoever. Uh, along the Pacific Northwest, the Trimmer Department 
surprisingly shows zero tremor. Zero. Nothing. There's no movement, folks. Everything's good. Go back to bed. There's nothing going on. I, I, I don't know. I don't have a specific way of monitoring this activity myself other than what these folks here at the PNSN.org network um, give us publicly. So, I, you know, we just kind of have to go with what they're saying, right? I don't have access to the uh, trimmer uh, seismic readings uh, as far as the live data goes, unfortunately. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Into the, uh, let's go ahead and go back to the all magnitudes here. Puerto Rico. What's going on in the beautiful area of Puerto Rico? We're looking at a seismic increase once again along the Puerto Rico Trench. A major player in uh, subduction zone earthquakes. Looking at uh, quite a few threes and twos. The largest looks to be a 3.8. See that earthquake right there at 58 kilometers near the Mona Seamount. Seamount. There's a lot of uh, plate dynamics here at work. Some crunching, some stretching, some subduction. A lot of, uh, lot of um, plate movement here in this area. But uh, don't, uh, don't let your guard down on the Puerto Rico trench area. This thing can produce some major earthquakes. Just be on guard. The uh, states up here, little earthquake activity. We kind of mentioned about potentially an increase in seismic activity along the new Madrid fault system in the update video last night uh, just because of what's going on along the west coast and all along the Texas and east coast area and that uh, kind of came true a little bit 2.0 near Cooter, Cooter, Missouri 7.5 uh, kilometers below the surface in this area of the New Madrid fault system and a little bit of earthquake activity around the North Carolina area with a 2.1 near Girton uh, North Carolina, Oklahoma City near uh, Oklahoma as far as Quinton activity goes uh, seeing a little swarm of activity all confined to one another this activity has been ongoing for a few months well I wouldn't say a few months but a couple months in this area uh, and it's been roughly about six to seven kilometers or so below the surface a 3.7 is the largest in the sequence of earthquakes here so kind of kind of monitoring this earthquake activity there is some Let's go ahead and bring up the uh, satellite view. There is some interesting um, hydrothermal type activity out here. You can see potentially one in this image. And, and if you expand further back, there's a couple others within the vicinity. But I can't be 100% certain if that's what's causing the uh, earthquake activity below the surface at six to seven kilometers uh, downstream there. But uh, I can't rule that out either. Uh, let's go ahead and shoot over towards the west once again. Uh, Pecos, Texas area, seeing some movement. Also getting that line of earthquake activity through Yellowstone. Uh, even though I didn't really see nothing really popping up on the Yellowstone, this may have been some older earthquake activity uh, that is showing up here on this map, stretching down through the Intermountain West regions of Utah and also down into uh, just short of Las Vegas area. Southern California region, not a whole lot of movement. We're looking at the swarming activity last night. That has kind of died down, but not completely. We're looking at about eight earthquakes or so within the vicinity of the earthquake swarm that we seen kick off last night around the Salton Sea area. Uh, but uh, could could be a good sign that we're looking at diminishing activity there. Uh, Ridgecrest and the uh, Antelope Valley area is looking uh, all typical for aftershock sequences. No movement as far as surface actu activity goes along the Cascadia. And uh, like I say, the big story right now, go ahead and check out the uh, South Sandwich Islands area as far as earthquake activity goes. Uh, looking diminishing, quite a bit of diminishing of earthquake activity in this region. Only a couple earthquakes in the four to five range on the southern end of this South Sandwich Island trench. That's definitely uh, seen a lot of earthquake movement and pressure buildup in this region and release over the past couple weeks or so. Uh, 5.0 in Chile looks to be the latest earthquake on the map. Looks like that kind of ramped up here just as I was speaking on the earthquake video. That 5.0, 99 kilometers into the trench of the uh, Peru-Chile trench area. Uh, major player, once again, in producing some significant size earthquakes. Major mega earthquakes here in this area. I've seen quite a bit of deep movement building up in this region, so... What happens when we see deep movement? Obviously, buildup along the trench area 
It does not disappear into some beautiful unicorns and rainbow type clouds. It builds up into some significant stress and uh, ultimately once again releasing a major release uh, in a mega quake fashion. So uh, pay close attention when we see lots of swarms there in a subduction zone. Uh, what else we got folks? So uh, like I say, kind of keeping an eye on the yellow, the uh, Kilauea volcano area for now. It's definitely uh, worth watching. I think we're going to see an eruption out there pretty soon. Not in a mega fashion, but uh, there's always the possibility of, uh, you know, a surprise, so to speak. Also, the uh, Hilawea, uh, what is it? Hilawea slump out here, we need to watch uh, that for potential when it comes to, uh, well, maybe I'll include that at the end of the video. I did a pretty substantial update on, the, uh, on that slump area and producing potentially a tsunami a collapse of that area that could hit the west coast so i will include that at the end of this video coming up here towards the end like I say youtube will uh, key it up for me but kill away up check that out folks that's a significant amount of magma movement you talk about yellowstone right what are we looking for when it comes to a, uh, um, a potential super eruption of the uh, yellowstone volcano we would see this but probably tenfold and much, much, much more larger magnitude. So uh, Yellowstone is a sleeping giant and she continues to sleep today. No magma intrusion, no fear mongering. This is pure facts when it comes to looking at these graphs here, folks. All right, have a good night. Stay safe out there. We will chat you guys another time and um, just be prepared. There's a whole lot of stuff going on on this planet right now, folks. Um, we'll chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out.